Hello, we're going to do a little video about matrices um, as a way to solve um, a system of equations. Okay, so you have learned about elimination and substitution, and those are really good ways to solve systems of equations. However, um, they're really, really useful for systems of two equations with two unknowns. And as we learned when we went through and did three equations with three unknowns, it got a little bit more complicated. And that complication increases for every additional equation and variable that you add. And so when we have matrices, we learn like a process that can be utilized for very large systems of equations. It helps us to learn an algorithmically way to approach the problem because algorithms are very simple rules that you just follow over and over again, okay? So the rules that we're gonna call are going to be um, called row operations. Okay, and we have three row operations. Okay, um, so remember, we're solving a system of equations, so I'm going to do it two equation, two unknown equations. So we have x minus 3y equals 8, for example, and 4x plus 2y equals 4, okay? So here's our system of two equations with two unknowns. And we need as many equations as we have unknowns or else we cannot solve the system, okay? So if you think about, if I gave you this system, then it wouldn't have mattered had I written the x minus 3y plus 8 first, or I ran it below 4x plus 2y equals to 4. It would have been the same system. So what we're going to be doing when we do our matrix, it's an augmented matrix, and that's because we have this vertical line here. and each row is going to represent an equation, and each column is going to represent a variable. So the coefficient in front of the x is a 1, the coefficient in front of this y is a negative 3, and then the constant is 8. This augmentation is like the equal sign, okay? So the second equation becomes 4 plus, sorry, there's no plus there. So we have 4 and then we have 2 because that's the coefficient in front of my y variable. And then we have 4. Okay? So these row operations are what you can do to these rows that are legal and doesn't change our system. So just I could rewrite this second equation on top of it. And if we have it first, it would be the same system. Similarly, I can go through an interchange my rows, and I won't be changing my system at all, okay? So we know that when we have, um, when we went, when we have a, uh, we're going to solve it by elimination, for example, or when we have an equation in general, I can always do the exact same thing to both sides of my equation, and it's okay. So if I went through, and I had like x minus 3y equals to 8, and I multiply both sides by a negative 4 and got negative 4x plus 12y equals a negative 32, that would be fine. This equation is equivalent to this equation. It just has some factor that we have multiplied both sides by. Okay. So the same thing goes for when we do row operations. We can multiply a row by a non-zero multiple, okay? Then when we were doing elimination and we had our second equation up here also, you would go through and be like, wait a second. What we would do is we would add these entries together and we'd get zero x plus 14 y equals a negative 28. Then you'd go through and you'd solve this by dividing by 14 
and you get that y equals a negative 2. Okay, but what we care about is this third row operation is what we did right here, is that we added corresponding coefficients to these variables together, and we got a new equation. So what we can do here is that we can add corresponding rows, entries, with non-zero multiples of other rows. Okay. I could have added this x to this 4x at the very beginning, but it wouldn't have been very helpful because I would have gotten my two equations into one equation and I would have still had two variables. So I had to add it to a non-zero multiple, which I actually did up here together. Okay, and I can only add corresponding entries because remember these var values actually are just coefficients in front of the x, and we can only add like terms together. Okay, so our goal. So here's our row operations, and we can only do those row operations. Okay, our goal is to get whatever our matrix is by doing row operations into some matrix that has ones on the main diagonals, zeros below, and I'm okay if you just have other numbers in this A, B, and C place. Okay, So I have to go through and figure out what I can do to make these entries correspond to these entries into those values, okay? So that's our goal. And we can only do these three row operations, okay? So what you want to think about is to get this entry is ask yourself how would I eliminate x, okay? So, when we have the system up here, what would I do to eliminate x? I would have multiplied this first row by negative 4 and then add those two rows together. So, 1, 4, negative 3, 2, 8, 4. And I want to make a new row 2, so I'm going to make it a capital R. This capital means new row 2. And I want to do that by multiplying a negative 4 by row 1, because remember, I want to multiply this first equation, which is my row 1, by negative 4, and then add it to the second equation, or my row 2. So when I have a lower case, it's going to be my old row 1, my old row 2. Okay. Sometimes it's nice to have a little aside. And I have a negative 4 times row 1. I'm going to have a negative 4 times 1, which is a negative 4. Negative 4 times a 3, which is a positive 12. Negative 4 times an 8, which is a negative 32. And then I'm going to have my row 2. And it's so going to be 4, 2, and 4. And then I just add these together. And I'm going to get my new row 2. So I'm going to get a 0, 14, negative 28. Which, if you remember from when we did it by elimination, that's actually what we got. We have a negative, I mean a 0x plus 14y equals a negative 28. And here, this row means 0x plus 14y equals a negative 28. So I'm going to go through, and this is my new row 2, so it becomes 
my new row two, and my row one, although I changed it down here, I'm not making a new row one, I'm only making a new row two. So I'm gonna keep my old row one, okay? So then we have this matrix, and we aren't quite at our goal matrix because we wanna have this one, okay? So what you wanna think about how to get this one is be like, okay, how, if this was an equation, how would I solve for y? Remember, this is the same thing as 14y equals a negative 28. So you're like, okay, well, what would I do? Well, I would go through, make a new row two again by going through and you can say dividing it by a 14 or you could be multiplying it by 1 14th, okay? If you want, you can still do it the aside and that'd be 1 14th of R2 is going to be 1 14th times 0 is 0. 1 14th times 14 is 1. And 1 14th times a negative 28 is a negative 2. So again, I'm not making a new row 1, so that's going to stay the same as it was over here. And my new row two is going to be now this zero, one, negative two. And as you can see, now our matrix is in our goal. We had one on the main diagonal, zeros below, and numbers elsewhere. Okay? So I want you to kind of just see how you go through and do the algorithm. And then once you get this place, you back substitute it out, you make it into an equation. So we have x minus 3y equals to 8, and then we have y equals a negative 2. If I had asked you to solve this system, you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. All you got to do is plug in a negative 2 for that y, and you get x minus 3 times a negative 2 equals to 8. So you have x plus 6 equals to 8 minus 6 on both sides, x equals to 2. Okay, so that ends up being our solution, okay? And you might be like, okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Um, but really, we were just doing elimination. We were just doing it in the data structure of a matrix, okay? And you might be like, well, it seems, maybe you're thinking that seems extra complicated, okay? Um, but remember, you need to have as many variables as you do um, solutions. So when you wanted to solve, I mean, solve an unknown three equation, three unknown, what you went through and you did is you eliminate the same variable in two. So we had three equations, three unknowns, and you went through and you changed that to two equations, two unknowns. Then we went through and just like we did up here, you made this two equations, two unknowns, into one equation, one unknown. And when we went through and we learned this, we went through and did it with elimination, but you can also do it with matrices and you have the same situation. If I had had this as four equations, four unknowns, I would have had to start with four equations, four unknowns, and then go through and change it to three equations, three unknowns, and then go to two equations, two unknowns. And so you can see how this could become a pretty complicated system, and you maybe wouldn't know how to start it. Okay? So we're going to do a three system, three unknown system that I'm not going to do with elimination first. Um, I'm just going to go through and do these row operations for you to see. Okay? So just as a quick reminder, so you have a little note, our row operations are, you can switch rows, multiply row by non-zero, and add row with non-zero multiple of another row. Okay. And my system that I'm going to have is going to be 2x 
plus y minus z equals a negative 3, x minus y plus z equals a 0, minus 3x plus 2y minus z equals to 4. Okay, so we still make this into the same matrix, the same strategy as before. We're just going to have three rows because we have three ingredients. We have 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 4. Okay? And our goal is going to be taking this matrix and making it ones on the main diagonal, zeros below, numbers everywhere else. Okay, and that's going to be our goal. Okay, so when we go through and we take this number out, it's going to be like we are eliminating x in an equation. Okay, then we're going to go through and we're going to eliminate x again. Remember when we went through and do elimination, you have to eliminate the same variable twice. And then you're going to have an equation with two unknowns and... Um, two equations and then we're going to go through and with those two equations we're going to go through and eliminate y okay then we're going to get all of these these ones and that's going to be how you would have solved this first equation by getting a leading coefficient in front of the x as a one the here we're going to get the leading coefficient in front of the y into a one here we're going to have a leading coefficient in front of our z into a one okay so Right now, before, we ended up having, it was really nice because we had a 1 as our scenario. It doesn't matter. You can go through and change it if you want to because we can switch rows. So if you wanted to, you can go through and switch those two rows. And it probably will be a little bit helpful if you do that. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is 2, 1, negative 1 negative 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 4. And I'm going to get a new row 1 and a new row 2, and I'm going to just interchange those together. So I'm going to have 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 4. And it's worth your time to make sure that you really copy it down right because it really sucks to mess it up. Okay? So, basically, what we did is we had our system now is going to be Okay. Say I want to eliminate this x. I want to probably use this equation. So what would I do? My new row 2 is going to be, I want to multiply this row by negative 2. So I'm going to have a negative 2 times row 1. And then I'm going to add it to this row. Okay. I'm going to do a little aside. So negative 2 row 1 is going to be negative 2, 2, 2, 0. Row 2 is going to be... 2, 1, negative 1, 3, and then I'm going to get a new row 2, it's going to be 0, 3, 1, 3. So I'm going to have my new row, my row 1, row one doesn't change. My new row 2 is going to be 0, 3, 1, 3, and my row 2 doesn't change, so I have a negative 3, 2, negative 1, 4. Okay? So now, I've changed, I have these two equations still, and a new equation that I form with just two variables. Okay? So I want to eliminate x again. What would you do to eliminate x? I want to use this equation and this equation. I'm going to multiply this by... 
three, this whole row by three, and then add it to this row. So I'm going to get a new row three, and it's going to be three times row one plus row three, because I want to multiply this equation, which is row one, by three, and then add it to this equation so I can eliminate my x. Okay, do a little side again. So I three times row one is three, negative three, three, zero. Row three is gonna be negative three, two, negative one, four. Add them together. And you get this new row three, new row three. That is gonna be zero, negative one, two, Four. My row two stays the same. My row one changes. Okay. So remember our goal was to get one with zeros below, and now we have to go through and using these two two rows, how would you eliminate this? Because this is going to be like three x plus well, it's going to be like three y plus z equals to three. And we have a negative y plus 2z equals to 4. Okay, so if I had that out here, and I had the system, 3y plus z equals to 3, and negative y plus 2z equals to 4, and I wanted to eliminate my y, what would you do? You probably multiply this row, which is my row three. So I'm going to have, I'm going to get a new row three because I want to get a zero here. And it's going to be multiplying row three by three. And then I'm going to add that to my row two. Okay. So I do my little aside. Um, I'll do it right over here. So I'm going to have three times row three was going to be three times zero, which is zero, Th three times a negative one, which is a negative three, three times two, which is six, and three times four, which is 12. Then I'm gonna go through and get row two and just copy it down here. So I have a zero, three, one, three. And I'm gonna add those together to get my new row three, zero, zero, seven oh it's not a three it's a oh no no sorry make sure i do this right okay so we had zero times row three so it's zero negative three six twelve row two zero three one three Sorry, I'm taking a pause because I feel like we made a mistake somewhere along here, and I want to make sure that we didn't make a mistake because I know the answer should be. So one second. You guys can go through and try to see if you can find a mistake too. Oh, I know what it was. Okay. So when we have negative 2 times row 1, we have negative 2 times 1, which is a negative 2. Negative 2 times a positive 1 is a positive 2. Negative 2 times a positive 1 is a negative 2. So when I add these together, this should have been a negative 3. So my answer here should have been a negative 3. Okay. Okay, so then when I add these together, I have uh, three times row three. So I have three times zero is zero. Three times a negative one is a negative three. Three times two is six and three times four is 12. 
And then I have my row 2, which is going to give me 0, 3, negative 3, 3. So then I have, this is going to be um, a 3. Let me try to make any other mistakes. It's really easy to make this mistake, so taking your time is worth your, worth your effort. So 3 times row 1... Okay, so this makes my new matrix 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 3, negative 3, 3, 0, 0, 3. Um, hold on a second. Oh, that's supposed to be a negative 3, right? 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3. So that would have been a negative 3. So row 2 should have been a negative 3 there, negative 3 here. And then we'll have a negative 3 here, which will make this into a 9. So that's a 9. Okay. Sorry, guys. But that's how you go through and you solve, you find your mistakes. So hopefully you kind of see what I did. And now you want to go through and be like, how would you, if this was an equation, 3z equals to 9, how would you solve for your z? Make a new row 3 by dividing by 3. So I'll have a 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 3, negative 3, 3, 0, 0. Remember we did this, my one third row three becomes zero times one third, which is zero. Zero times one third, which is zero. One third times three is one, and one third times nine is three. Okay. And then you go through and you make it take it out. So this third row becomes the equation z equals to three. The second row becomes 3y plus minus 3z equals to 3. And then this top row becomes x minus y plus z equals to 0. Okay, so you go through and you plug in this 3 into here, and you get 3y minus 3 times 3 equals to 3. So this becomes 3y minus 9 equals to 3. Oh, totally with a negative 3. So then we have 3y equals to 6. And you get y equals to 2. So we already have two variables now. And then you go through and you plug in those two variables here. So you have x minus 2, which is minus y minus, is minus 2, plus z, which is 3, equals to 0. So you get x plus 1 equals to 0, minus 1 on both sides. And you get that x equals a negative one. Okay. So what I would recommend that you do is you kind of make the connection between a system equation and doing matrices and doing elimination. Okay. These are just asking you to eliminate X and then using these two equations to eliminate your Y. Okay. Then these ones, you just divide every single number by those numbers to get what it is. Okay. Um, Oh, I said I could have done that. I should have probably made this right here and done a row 2 equals 1 third times row 2. And I would have made the system 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 
zero, one, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, three. And it would have made this back substitution that we did out here a little tiny bit easier, but it's fine. Um, at this level in math 1010, um, if you did this and you forgot to divide that by three on all the terms, I would be fine with it because you are indicating that you know how to do this matrix um, elimination. In math 1050, we're going to revisit this and uh, you may have a higher standard that you have to maintain. Okay. Um, so when you go through and do it, make the connection between Howard is doing elimination and how we're in the matrix structure. I highly recommend that you indicate these little processes that you're doing throughout the problem because then you really are aware and that's how we were able to check our mistakes because if I had to go through and do the whole problem again, I wouldn't have been able to go through and figure out all my mistakes. Okay. Plus, it's really easy for me to see what you're doing and I can tell you where you're making your mistakes if I know what you're trying to think through. Okay. Take your time in multiplying. Doing this aside is a good idea. It makes us so you make fewer mistakes in your addition and subtraction. Okay. And then after you get it into the goal format, you take it out, and put it back into equations, and then just substitute these values as you go through in. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, good luck. And send me questions if you have more email.